morning and good afternoon to everyone who is joining us from Latin America and Europe, respectively, for our second to last webinar of uh, IURC Latin America, focusing on the final lessons from the region to region cooperation component. Please uh, feel free to write in the chat your name and where you are joining from. <clears throat> also, um, it's important to note that we have simultaneous translation uh, in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. To everyone who is joining us now, we have, uh, as I say, simultaneous translations. Uh, in addition, at the end of the presentations, we will have time to questions and, and answers. Please write uh, any question you may have uh, to the panelists in that section. Finally, at the end of the session, we will have a short survey to receive your feedback about uh, this, uh, this uh, webinar. Before I start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Johannes Granja. I am the regional, the regional region cooperation leader in the International Urban and Regional Cooperation Program of uh, IURC, Latin America, funded by the European Union. And for those uh, I'm, I'm familiar with the program, uh, IURC's main objective is to exchange best practices in urban development and regional innovation between Latin America and European cities and regions. In the framework of uh, region to region cooperation, 10 regions from Latin America collaborated with 10 regions of Europe on a variety of topics linked to regional innovation strategies and sustainable economic development, amongst others. In today's event, we will present some selected success stories of the regional component of IURC, which had the goal of contributing to the development of regional innovation strategies and innovation ecosystems. The cases showcase the work in pairings in promoting multi-stakeholder collaboration platforms involving academia and the private uh, sector. Small medi and medium enterprises, uh, development, policies supporting research and development, as well as concrete pilot showcasing of a strength of programs like IURC. We have we'll have the opportunity to learn about the cooperation experiences between Ostro Bosnia in Finland and Magallanes in Chile, Paraná in Brazil and Silesia, Poland, and Tierra de Fuego in Argentina, and Opolski in Poland. So um, it's for me a pleasure to present our our panelists. We have uh, Anna Karin Jerker, Head of Global Education Service, Novia University of Applied Science uh, from Ostrobotnia in Finland. Jerker Johnson, Coordinator of International Affairs at the Regional Council of Ostrobotnia. Um, from Paraná, we have uh, the presence of Isulet Cortez, Director of Projects and International Business of Assets Pro Paraná, Felipe Braga, advisor of the Paraná State uh, Government, Barbara Safir, deputy director of the Department of Regional Development of uh, the Department of Silesia, uh, and then from uh, Tierra de Fuego, Antártida, and Islas del Atlántico Sur, we have the, the, the Princess of Andres Manuel Dachari, minister uh, of the government, and Marcin Stanisweski, head of specialist of the Polski Center for Economic Development. I think that we have to the presence of, uh, of uh, Claudia Gallardo from Chile, too. And uh, first of all, I would like to, to, to introduce the pairing between Magallanes in Chile and Strobonia in Finland. 
um, their collaboration featured a series of virtual discussions and bilateral 3D visits while participating actively at international events facilitated by IURC, enhancing their global perspective. Embassies played a significant significant role in the project, fostering cross-border ties. They discovered shared challenges around foreign direct investments, uh, driving green transition. The cooperation was further supported by the granting of uh, team uh, final knowledge project financing with uh, more or less 75,000 uh, euros, which is being supplemented by local contributions from both regions uh, of about uh, 15,000 euros each, totaling almost uh, 100,000 uh, euros investment to continue with the cooperation beyond IURC. So, uh, Anna Karin and Jerker, the floor is yours. So, Okay. Yeah. Then, then I then I start and I I give the 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 let's see if I can succeed to share my are you seeing my, my PowerPoints now? Yes. Okay, then I make it okay. Uh Thank you for, for this opportunity, and, and I will start to tell something about general on, on this PowerPoint and the cooperation and, and how we, we went about with the cooperation. We started, of course, with the application, and then we started our discussions, as all of you done. I'm following the same structures provided by the program and uh, seeing on, on, on the activities. We had, of course, discussion and reflection between the, the, the discussions and, and reciprocal study visits. And then we participated in the conferences. And then we also tried to engage with the embassies on a national level. That is, you know, these things take time and, and so on, that, that you have somebody who is continuing this and, and that you are working in, in a context. If you look on the milestones, I mean, we, can, we are looking on the milestones as, as such here. But in fact, they are happening the, the, the same thing. First, we had a twinning and encounter. And the first question was, was the selection of, of the intervention team. And that was, of course, you know, linked to the challenges we, we, that we discovered very, very soon that, that we have a common challenge with, with foreign direct investments in wind power combined with green hydrogen and how that affects the society. So, so we we went about to have a, a, a team identified that is, is linked to the universities because it's a question of how can you realign the innovation system. And then, of course, the, the, the challenge is, is obvious. You have multinational companies with a lot of money, expertise, and from the top of the world meeting very small, small regions. And that creates a shortage of, of labor, Increased costs, a problem of restructuring the economies, probably also some social problems, and what you generally could call the, the Dutch disease. Then, then uh, this following the structure provided, again, I would first like to, to bring forth that you have the multi governance approach. You have to recognize that different levels of government have different roles, that you have the budget, the legislation of central governments, and putting the frameworks but also the local governments has, has a very important role as orchestrators of the change. And here, you know, it's good to, to, to cooperate with other regions because we are sort of sharing the problems of how to go about, how to make it concrete has happened. Then of course, how to, to get the pentahelix, how to, how to get the university to cooperate with the public sector, how to be a partner in the discussion understanding the other other words and then also a very important thing is to to learn based on the cultural challenges that that um, if we see in europe that that we have some regions going well and us are not going so well what are the cultural challenges organizations structures 
that leads to that different re uh, regions are, are successful in, in different ways. Uh, then, of course, when when we look on 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 the no um, yes, then when we look look on on how to to involve the stakeholders, I mean that is depend uh, depending on 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 the on what you are working with. Now, now first the the principle that we used in in our case. Is is based on on the Mitchell stakeholder classification. Looked at who has an urgency on this, and who who likes to be, and, and then you are of course well linked very much in a, in our case with people who has previously worked with, with Latin America. Uh, some knowledge of Spanish is, is also good, because that also creates a cultural wi a window to 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 the region. Also a legitimacy that. Does the organization work with things otherwise that is relevant for the cooperation, and and how can can um, that how can you sort of link the organization to the cooperation to continue this, and then of course power that that does the stakeholder the person that you engage has the stakeholder you know a possibility to promote this cooperation within the organization to change the organization. Because in too many uh, places we have a situation where you have a project, and the project is is, is not living with with the line activities of the organization, because these things take very much time. So so the stakeholders that we are involving and we, that we continue to work uh, involve that depends on on how the the dialogue continues between us. So, 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 what is the, the main result and achievement is, is of course that it, it provides a challenge based for learning. That that we have we have identified the challenge of, of uh, foreign direct investment and and also how how it reacts to that with Dutch disease. And then you can start to learn on what needs to be done because learning is is of course context bound. And then, of course, it, it gives the regional council as such a bigger leverage as a part of, of a cooperation between between Europe and and, and Asia. We, we are a sort of a part of the European external dimension. And of course, this is a very good good network. And also, I mean, sometimes you have some unintended positive effects that we discovered that that Magallanes want to to start a greenhouse sector high-tech greenhouse sector uh, that that Chile doesn't have, not to have that experience, but in, in, in Ostrobotnia we have been cult cultivating um, vegetables and greenhouses for, for more than 100 years. So, so that is something that, that we could could share, but, but that was not part of the cooperation intended. Next, please. Could you? Yes, and this I, I already touched upon. So next, please. So th then, then was what I lesson learned that the good practices are context bound, and that is a sort of analytic thing that that you have to to look on on what is the context, how can you analyze it, and how can you translate it to that. Also, of course, that is is, is key that 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 the regions of Europe has been given a role as, as the implementers of, of, of cohesion policy and, and, and thrived in this position, and especially with smart specialization, and especially that it's linked to the multi-annual financial framework that is, that is we, have, we have resources behind it. And that is, of course, then a stronger position compared to that in America. Uh, next, please. Uh, well, Learning is good, you know. It, it broad mindset. You you need to use the, all the capacities you have in organization. You need to engage new people. You you have to to do it in a different way. And also, it's good also to have an external uh, perspective because everybody start trying to to reflect on these things and explain things that you don't notice by yourself, but when you notice that you, when you need to 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 speak it uh, to somebody else. Also, I, I would, would like to give an eloge to the ERC program because, I mean, it's underfinanced, it's not very much, but that is like the, the partnership for regional innovation that the people involved are also interested in this. 
and this is you, you don't need a big problem you do you need the people's program you need people who are interested and then next one this last one please and and then my, the recommendations for the for the for the program that i would like to lift forward is, is first that resource takes time that that even if we have been doing now for two or three years that is a very short time and and we usually have in the european context we, we usually want people you know to to you start an initiative and you want the evaluation after two two months and that is impossible but but i think it's going good then then you have two parts of of the the, the cooperation is also you had a city to city and region to region now the city to city is easier because the city you are concretely building something something and then you can compare it and and learn on that regions regions is very much on, on learning transnational learning on policy development and that's is sort of uh, more complicated things but still they are sort of the two two sides of over the coin and then then i see that that also that that the recommendation that we are now going to the sort of new innovation policies and and the partnership of regional innovation in europe and I think this is very relevant because it, it's a wider process, open discovery process, looking what happens to, to, to the society and not only smart specialization to competitiveness. And I think it's, this is a very good way to engage because, because you can engage a larger sort of, of uh, round of people. And then I will give the, the word to Anna Kari, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jerker, for that presentation. I just wanted to mention a few words. Um, my name is Anna Karin Janssen and I represent the Novia University of Applied Sciences. And uh, I wanted to mention this because the Universities of Applied Sciences in Finland have a mandate by law to contribute to regional development. So when Jerker gathered a group of university representatives, we were also included uh, from the Universities of Applied Sciences. And I've had the opportunity actually to be part of this IURC collaboration from the beginning and also to visit Magallanes. Some of you in the audience today, uh, I have also had the chance to meet in Torino and Brussels earlier this year. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity to also think a bit of broader sense of regional co collaboration, what that can mean when you bring in different stakeholders. So uh, I wanted to highlight that education and specifically the university sector has an important role for regional innovation ecosystems, both in terms of skills development research and uh, due to um, the close collaboration we have, for instance, with the industry. So when a new industry establishes uh, itself in the region or your regions, uh, then there that also comes with other needs like uh, the skills development, as you know. So to continue this uh, collaboration between the regions, but at the higher education institution level, we started looking for funding opportunities. And as mentioned in the introduction, we managed to get some uh, seed funding together with University of Magallanes from uh, Team Finland Knowledge Program, which is a program under the National Agency for Education in Finland. So this project is called the WISPER project, uh, relates to wind power to hydrogen, um, interregional synergies in education and research. And sorry for you who are trying to translate my quick speech. Uh, this project will enable us to continue learning from each other with visits for, of both students and teachers, and also creating some very practical joint actions. For instance, we will uh, create a course uh, open for students, but also for others with uh, industry representatives coming, coming in and the focus will be on wind and green hydrogen, which is very much in line with the joint priorities identified at the regional level. So this is an example of how we have collaborated and I will give also some final words to Claudia that I see is also joining us today. Thank you. Eh, mi nombre es Claudia Gallardo Ojeda. Eh, soy profesional de la División de Fomento e Industrias del Gobierno Regional de Magallanes. Y bueno, eh, Jerker y Ana Karin describieron muy bien lo que ha sido nuestro trabajo conjunto con Ostrobosnia. 
por lo que me gustaría contarles un poco de, 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 de la experiencia que ha significado para nosotros. Ha sido muy importante el poder trabajar en conjunto con nuestros colegas de Ostrobosnia en el marco de las actividades de IURC, ya que pudimos conocer una realidad distinta a la de nuestra región y a la vez identificar oportunidades de trabajo conjunto. Eh, el estar en una región aislada del resto del país y del mundo, ustedes saben que estamos acá cerca de la Antártica, <ríe> implica que muchas veces dejamos de mirar el exterior y con este trabajo hemos podido con constatar que existen similitudes con otras partes del mundo y podemos aprender de las lecciones aprendidas que ya tienen. Así es que, eh, el, el, eh, sobre todo, por ejemplo, cuando pudimos ver el, el trabajo público-privado que se hace en Finlandia en materias de innovación, el trabajar en conjunto de manera colaborativa con la academia, eh, son, son experiencias que nosotros eh, hemos traído y estamos tratando de replicar acá en la región. Eh, adicionalmente me gustaría destacar la oportunidad que significó el participar en el Cities Forum de Turín ya que pudimos conocer la forma en la que una ciudad se transformaba cómo se efectuaban esos cambios sociales y productivos eh, con un enfoque de desarrollo sostenible pensando en los cambios profundos que se vienen para nuestra región sobre todo con la instalación de la industria del hidrógeno verde. Pues, eh, además, considerando el trabajo futuro, al, actualmente tenemos un convenio de colaboración, el cual ya se encuentra aprobado por todas las partes internas, y tengo una novedad para, para ayer, que, eh, incluso aprobado por Cancillería, así es que está pronto a salir, está para firma de, del gobernador. Y finalmente... Para no quitarles más tiempo, eh, agradecer al equipo de Ostrobosnia, por supuesto, y al equipo de URC por la oportunidad, por eh, la dedicación y el apoyo que, que, que ponen en estas actividades y que hacen que se puedan mantener en el tiempo. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Eh, muchas gracias por los, por, los, por los aportes, Claudia. Thank you very much. To, to Jörker, to Anne Karim for, for your presentations. And uh, we are going to pass to the next uh, region, region cooperation experience. And uh, now we are going to uh, talk about the cooperation between uh, Paraná in Brazil and Silesia in uh, Poland. Uh, to that sense, we have the presence of uh, Isulet Cortez, Director of Projects and International Business of uh, ASES Pro. Uh, Philippe Braga, is, uh, he is advisor at the Parana State uh, Government. And uh, Barbara Safir, who is uh, Deputy Director of the Department of uh, Regional Development in the Department of uh, Silesia. Parana yeah. Silesia have sophisticated solidified their commitment to innovation and digital translation. Translation. This partnership encompassing digital transformation, smart specialization, and mutual regional promotion market, a significant step forward in international cooperation. The regions have already initiated joint projects to the InnoGlobal program and are participating at the low carbon business section uh, project, showcasing their commitment to the sustainable innovation. Uh, the initiative stands out offering a platform from entrepreneurs from both regions to explore new markets, find business partners and engage collaborative research and development projects. So uh, let's go with uh, the presentation uh, when you want. Yes, we can start. Yes. So we divided our presentation. So this is the second slide. So maybe Isule, you can start with the first, please. Uh, so uh, three of us, we will speak and we will change from one slide to another to make it maybe more 
you know, um, more energetic. <laughs> uh, so Isule, could you start with the first, please? Silesia Parana, this is the second one. Hello, <laughs> Isule. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I is not working for me uh, getting back to to the first slide. Okay, I, I never try mind. To manage. In fact, okay, so I will just. In fact, it's a, a resume of uh, what Johannes already said that uh, we start our cooperation in the field of uh, um, digital transition and smart region um, focus on. Uh, new technologies, new uh, innovation, and uh, including sustainability uh, in smart specialization. So uh, as each of you, we made uh, uh, the projects to study visit, but in fact, we had one additional visit. Uh, thanks to the first contact, we, um, we hosted the um, representation of Invest Parana, and yes, now you can go to the, to the second. It's okay. And we uh, uh, and we um, of course to, when we were preparing all all this uh, project and uh, the visits and uh, the the exchange, so we made uh, many many uh, bilateral uh, online meetings. And uh, of course, uh, many daily uh, um, conversation. We also created uh, our own uh, WhatsApp group to to exchange when it's possible, especially because of this uh, time difference. So it, it's not always at the same time that you have an idea and you want to to share. So it's better to put it on some uh, some email oh. like that. And uh, this, um, we also, uh, the, the both visits were focused on uh, two um, large events uh, in Curitiba, it was Smart City Curitiba Expo in 2022, and in Katowice uh, uh, during the World Urban Forum, uh, the 11th session which uh, was also very um, interesting for our partner. And uh, and in fact, another one, uh, uh, it was uh, the time when we, uh, we're going to speak later on about it, but uh, one of our results is uh, already a, a, um, a signature of, of uh, agreement of cooperation. And uh, then uh, there was uh, another study visit. In fact, the workshop in Fortaleza where one of our stakeholders so the Central Mining Institute took place, uh, took part in a, a circular economy and waste management conference. Uh, so uh, maybe Isula, you can go to another. Just, just, slide. just to add, just to add uh, two uh, comments here. Uh, World Urban Forum was a fortunate decision and proposal mm -hmm. from the Silesia team. And I'm sure one of the most powerful events that uh, IURC, uh, IUC and IURC uh, have, matched, have matched these years. And Smart City Expo Curitiba, uh, now uh, we can uh, showcase you. Curitiba was selected in, uh, in the last few weeks. As one of the one of the top or the uh, bear the first or the I most mean, innovative in cities mm -hmm. in uh, in all uh, the world. So that's it. Okay. So, and about the the main uh, results and achievements, as I already said. So first of all, the agreement on cooperation. I think there is something very concrete. And uh, what are these? Um, well, in, in in which domain we are gonna participate we we're gonna uh, cooperate uh, and collaborate so it's gonna be on the on on next slides but uh, as well the developed project uh, uh, joined by two two, two parties uh, by the uh, Polish and uh, I mean Silesian and uh, um, Brazilian uh, Paranese institutions companies uh, of course this is um, constantly 
extensive network contacts because uh, as I said, with the daily conversation or, or uh, different ideas, so we, we are um, coming through uh, new ideas again and uh, uh, knowing uh, quite well, I think uh, both of us, uh, our own um, uh, regional uh, innovation ecosystem uh, uh, and uh, the whole ecosystem of, of partners and stakeholders. So it's a facilitate to, 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 to much make uh, uh, the, the future partners for, for different uh, projects, uh, we hope. And of course, uh, we also work on, it started in fact, uh, during the, uh, the, the meeting at the World Urban Forum when it was uh, the, the closure. Uh, so we sat down and uh, put uh, all our ideas on the paper and to, to make some uh, roadmap of, for future actions. So now it's for Isule, yes? <laughs> now it's uh, Filippi. Oh, Filippi, okay. sorry. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Uh, it's amazing to, to see you all again. Uh, it's amazing to see you, Jerker and, and Karin. Congratulations on your presentation. So very quickly, Paraná and Silesia have taken the opportunity of a URC to go further. So we have two sign agreements, uh, one between our two governments, which open a huge opportunity in several areas to mutually promote our regions, and the other between our sanitation company uh, called Sanepar, to produce and the Central Mining Institute in Silesia uh, to produce fertilizers from sewage sludge enriched uh, with microbiologic uh, vaccines. Next, please. Okay. Isole? So, uh, as some of the main results and achievements, uh, Felipe, uh, I would like you to, to comment on the opportunities that started between the Central Mining Institute and the Sanapar Sanitation Company of Paraná State. Felipe already said Felipe. about it. So next one okay. is about the... Uh, and low carbon business low carbon action. business yes. action this this microorganism based uh, technology uh, attracts the low carbon business actions program uh, to give us some support this slide is just to to mention that next please and uh, as, as main results and achievements uh, we started with uh, the Brasilesia Accelerator. This uh, program already started in the IU, uh, IUC uh, between uh, Silesia region and Brazil when uh, Silesia was pairing with the Minas Gerais state. And uh, this program is offering entrepreneurs in Brazil and Poland the chance to uh, validate their products, to learn and foster uh, knowledge in how to put uh, their offer in the international market or so. So to learn internationalization, expand into new markets, uh, find business partners, exchange uh, domain knowledge, and also uh, giving the chance for companies to uh, cross pollinate and try to soft land their venues in each other regions. So uh, this is a first uh, approach that we are uh, we have uh, uh, launched in Brazil uh, by last April, last 30 April, a call. and this call is going to present the the, the, the companies that were selected to be fostered uh, in this internationalization uh, support program. 
Uh, and next, I invite Barbara yes. uh, so, to present so the stakeholders. This involved. is uh, the, 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 the picture of uh, numbers, numerous uh, stakeholders uh, from our both uh, regions. And in fact, the, the numbers is still increasing uh, because we start, in fact, in a in, in, in few of them. And uh, they are uh, beside the, the, the public institutions, the, the regional institutions, uh, the development agencies and the um, techno parks, uh, the startups organizations, and uh, the uh, scientific institutes, institutes, and also the uh, universities. Uh, so, uh, yes, and the next one, please. This is about what uh, the Society region learned from this uh, cooperation uh, already so far. So uh, to know uh, the um, innovation ecosystem in Brazil and to uh, how to manage the economic and innovation development. So uh, and uh, when when we, when we already said so, it led us to sign of agreement and. Uh, uh, this uh, extension of, of uh, uh, friendly relation between both uh, regions. And uh, it's also uh, especially thanks to the professionals, to the institutions, to the companies, and uh, uh, which uh, were willing to expand their contacts and to share the knowledge, to share the experience, and uh, to think about uh, common projects for the future. Uh, and uh, so it was really uh, very, very interesting to participate in this URC initiative. And now and the, Felipe, your from comments Parana. on the lessons learned. From yeah. So here we would like to, to highlight and thank the working group of European Union who has chosen Salis and Paraná to work together. Uh, they did a very good job because our regions complement each other in terms of strengths and weaknesses. Another key point, consider the presence of our colleague Zolé here with us, who represents an association of IT companies and therefore operates in the private sector, is that cooperation which involves the private sector and not just governments tend to be more effective. And finally, another lesson learned is that IURC give us many opportunities when the events are organized. So I present to you all a concrete example during the 11th World Europe Forum that Isole mentioned in Katowice last year, we met representatives of the Ecological Transition Ministry from France, and we are starting a cooperation with them in 2024. Next, please. And uh, in the final reflections, uh, one, one of the things that I would add uh, in complement of Philippe and Barbara, uh, all those uh, partners or stakeholders involved uh, were very important, but the cooperation scheme and the governance system was preponderant, the most important thing. So we have had the opportunity to have very good teams uh, looking and working together in the same directions and looking uh, in complementarities. So. Uh, these uh, are some of the things that lead us to uh, most important uh, results. Uh, the participation in the IURC program provided the uh, uh, very good opportunities to expand our international uh, relationships in projects and contacts and our, the broad exchange of experiences, uh, not only in uh, Silesia and Paraná, but in Brazil and in Europe as, as a whole. Uh, as, for example, Felipe mentioned, uh, the, the, the opportunities that uh, we have had. And we hope to, uh, the, this, cooper this cooperation uh, will be ongoing. Uh, still, uh, we hope this is, goes further 
and we can have uh, another opportunities to establish and to profound these areas of cooperation, both in Silesia and both in, in Europe. Uh, so Brasilesia, Central Mining Institute, Sanapar Project, cooperations, uh, technological parks are some of the things that we have on our hands right now that we can uh, take advantage uh, to, to, to connect and uh, to walk towards economical and uh, social and uh, sustainable results. So we have not only a smart specialization, but smart and sustainable specialization. And now I give the floor to Barbara again. Yes. So in fact, the the recommendation we could give uh, there are uh, they are uh, numerous, but I would like especially underline three of them. So the well defined areas of cooperation is very important. So we have to know what do we want to do. Uh, the selection of stakeholders, so the the base of the network, uh, regional network of contacts, so the the well known um, ecosystem and openness to ideas and proposals, because sometimes maybe we have some ideas. I remember, and I said it at the beginning, we had many, many online meetings uh, before starting something uh, concrete. So it's also very important that sometimes we have to discuss more uh, longer. Uh, some ideas uh, we, we think at the beginning it's, it's, it's in a good direction, but then we, we, uh, we, we can always change if uh, something, uh, uh, not uh, not good enough or not working. So this is also very important. So to be open to to, to new proposals and um, yeah, that's the most important recommendations I would say. Yeah, and the the last last but not and least. <laughs> the last but not least, next steps. The most Philippe. important. Okay. Um, as our next steps in early 2024. We are going to organize an international hackathon with startups from Silesia and Paraná, which will be an exciting experience. We will look for financing possibilities together. Uh, we are going to continue to promote activities under Brasilesia initiative. And finally, uh, Juanes, in our understanding, IURC has planted several seeds and we still have a lot to harvest during the coming years. So we would strongly like to suggest another IURC version because what is good should not over. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And it was a pleasure once again working with you all. I hope to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Juliet, Philippe, and Barbara, for your interesting presentations. And uh, let's go now to today's last uh, presentation, uh, in which they will show us the attractive experience of uh, Tierra de Fuego in from Argentina and Opolski in in Poland. Uh, we have here with us. Uh, from uh, Argentina, from Tierra de Fuego, uh, to Constanza Renzone, Secretary of uh, International Affairs of Tierra de Fuego. And then we have to the uh, presence of uh, Marcin Stanisweski. Uh, sorry about my pronunciation. Uh, head Specialist of the Opolsky Center for uh, Economic uh, development. Um, as I said uh, before, <laughs> the collaboration has uh, effectively bridged top-down and bottom-up research and development cooperation, particularly within Opolsky's ongoing entrepreneurial development process. The engagement of uh, various stakeholders, including uh, decision makers, public administrations, universities, research and development centers and large uh, companies uh, has been a hallmark of this uh, partnership. So uh, please, uh, Marcin uh, and Constanza, 
Uh, go ahead. Thank you very much. Yes, maybe Constancia, you start with the presentation of ours. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. My name is Constanza Renzone. I'm Secretary for Foreign Affairs of the Province of Tierra del Fuego. Uh, I, I will have to apologize uh, because of my English also like the presenter. So I will start uh, to talk about with Marcin about the partnership between Opolsky and Tierra del Fuego. Okay, um, we will start with the areas of cooperation. We have uh, innovation and sustainability, and we choose two topics. On one hand, we have education, job, and skills, uh, digital skills, digital trades, education instance for that, for innovative services, and monitoring of SME's uh, potential. On the other hand, we have RIS4, which includes a sustainability and smart specialization on strategic areas like uh, wood technology, circular economy, energy efficiency, and sustainable loan for the industry. Uh, we want to say that this project uh, serve as a clear example of how decentralized cooperation can drive regional development and promote the adoption of innovative and sustainable practices uh, for both regions. Next, please, Martin. Yes, Thank that's you. right. Uh, on this slide, uh, uh, we have a summary of our main activities and milestones achieved. Um, we have to start uh, with the multi-level technical Um, sorry, Constanza, we cannot hear you. Maybe, Marcin, if you can say a few comments while Constanza is connecting back. Okay, um, while Constanza is disconnected, I will, I will maybe uh, go through this um, slide. Uh, we started with multi-level multi technical sessions on implementation of uh, RIS and STI strategies. So we met up with... Uh, with um, yeah, Constanza, you can uh, continue. Sorry. I started with describing yeah. with the multi-level technical sessions. You can follow up. Okay. Uh, sorry, my... My internet is very, very bad. So I was talking about the multi-level technical sessions on our RIS and STI strategy implementation. Uh, I want to say that the, these technical sessions was focused on the effective implementation of these uh, strategies. Um, these sessions uh, allowed us to, to align our goals and strategies for promoting innovation in our territory. So this was very, very important instance for us. The cross-sectoral technical sessions also det determined the topics areas of education, jobs, and skills, and the, the engagement aims to foster collaboration and innovation across various sectors crucial for regional development. Also, we have the workshop in Sevilla, and that instance, I think it was very, very important because it was the first concrete meeting of both regions representative. Till that moment, we were only on, you know, on, on digital instance. So this was very important to, to, to know the to have digamos, valuable discussions and exchange of ideas. Then we have um, the study visit from Tierra del Fuego to Opolsky and from Opolsky to Tierra del Fuego. And I think these visits uh, facilitate an, a deeper understanding of the regional context and promote the collaboration and knowledge sharing. Um, these activities, uh, I think, are very important because signify the commitment of both regions uh, to fostering innovation, collaboration, sustainable development, 
Um, we look forward to build uh, these achievements in our going partnership. Uh, we were talking about the involvement of the stakeholders in both regions from four sectors. I was talking about this uh, some minutes ago uh, because there were representatives of the regional governments, but also we have representatives from the academic area. You know, we have the participation of three universities. I think this is very, very important uh, thing to say. And um, we have also the private sector because we have some companies uh, in this uh, in these technical sessions, and also we have NGOs, which uh, it is, is important also. After that, we have some peering of regional stakeholders uh, on technical sessions, and we establish a network of coordinators and key stakeholders from the governments and from universities, and um, that was the step before to sign our memorandum of understanding. It's important to say that this memorandum was signed for the two governments and also for the three universities. And this was the basis, a formal basis of the networking collaboration. And also I think uh, makes the structure for an effective collaboration. Next one. Thank you. Um, I think in the main results and the achievement, we have to say that we, we, we can identify the areas for in scientific uh, projects and we identify some programs to finance, finance them, uh, Horizon Europe and some programs from Polish government. And the topics uh, were water and soil, sustainable farming, eco-packaging, and also the specification of the topics for future staff exchange of non-academics. I think it, this will be disruptive because um, the, dy the dynamics is, is different. Um, we can identify some programs like Euraccess and Polish national programs, which uh, will help to, to work on green economy, on forestry, on water, on sustainable food uh, products, circular economy, eco-design, and also digitalization. Okay, uh, I was talking about technical sessions and I think that it's important to, to, to emphasize in our first session because in that first session, we work about the training in digital skills for specialization and we have the participation from, of different actors from the territory and you can find public sector with a regional strategic framework, SIT, production, added value, uh, which worked in addition in, in educational and training programs as Argentina program, Academica, Dear Mode, but also has the participation of the private sectors. We are talking about companies, very important companies as Globant, Mirgor, BGH Group, and no, also very important contribution was uh, of our and the institutions, Centec, for example, which is a very, very important institution for Tierra del Fuego. And NGO sectors, we have a foundation which is very recognized in Argentina, which is the Sadowski Foundation. So I think this technical, this first technical session show us how the stakeholders was engaged in this project. Okay, I can take over now. Um, may I? Um, so the the <clears throat> the two technic technical sessions that we had, we um, we presented our um, our system, our regional uh, innovation system in Opolskie to to Tierra del Fuego to the stakeholders from. Uh, from that region, and uh, uh, the, 
the most important that these sessions were multi um, multi uh, governmental and and uh, cross sectoral so um it was it was the the learning process that uh, that we wanted to 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 share it with all stakeholders that were interested in this cooperation um therefore <clears throat> we presented uh, our uh, new project proposals for the topics um, of our cooperation. So the, there was a project uh, um, CE for CE, so for for the for the circular economy, SME origin for uh, for uh, European standards of uh, for food and um, geographical origin um, products, and and also we have um, we have also shared the. Uh, our uh, new project enabler for um, 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 for using um, AI in the public sector, and also um, uh, some other initiatives that we were going through uh, with our partners from from Brussels um, for the Horizon Europe. Um, we also um, um, shared uh, shared our good practices um, of training of and digital skills. Of um, um, that is uh, that is provided by universities for by uh, two our main universities, Technical University of Apollo and the University of Apollo, um, and also uh, that is provided by our companies. Um, yes, we discussed um, the the discretion of interest for further cooperation in that topic areas, and that was for the second session. Then we have the summary session that uh, um, that we managed to to bring all the stakeholders again and uh, to um, to put uh, some um, to to put some to summarize our um, our earlier sessions and to um, to focus on on um, on specific topics um, for um, for scientific cooperation and for cooperation on um, on uh, development of uh, innovation system um yeah so i'll tell you more about the study visit in opolskie because uh, it was uh, it was just after the sevilla event and we um we met with uh, with the universities both universities we and uh, we invited um, um, our delegates from, from Tierra del Fuego to Science and Technology Park on Neopole. Um, there were major companies that also, um, they were focusing on digital, um, uh, digital digitalization, let's say digitalization of um, um, industry, of the industry. Um, there are large companies, smaller companies um, that that were able to show some good practices to to Tierra del Fuego delegates, and um, also um, to to show the the trends uh, that we we uh, we found that uh, new specific topics were raised by stakeholders. So it was not just about us; it was more about stakeholders that they uh, they started to um to show their own uh, projects and also this showing that uh, there are specific topics that they want to continue cooperation with uh, partners from Tierra del Fuego so their counterparts from Tierra del Fuego to be honest so it was the AI in agri food sector e-commerce uh, digitalization of food industry uh, advanced manufacturing and soil research in sub, sub antarctic uh, areas but also, there's a specific topic of water that will come next. Um, as we were visiting uh, Tierra del Fuego, we also visited uh, numerous uh, numerous organizations, uh, stakeholders that we met earlier online, uh, but also new um, some some companies that they um, that they were participating in in our technical sessions, but only as participants. Um, so there were companies uh, like UPAC, uh, Ahumaderos Ushuaia, um, Atama, Almanza Entrepreneurs, but also there were Globant, ACF, and uh, Mirgor that they were participating early in technical sessions. And we also make visits to, to let's say, key stakeholders that we already have met in um, met online. And uh, as we were in Argentina, 
the new topics um, ag again uh, were raised. Uh, the university research for agri-food sector, recycling and upcycling, uh, trained uh, digital skills remain the, the they were underlined that there's a still main focus that they want to cooperate with uh, our universities, but also confirm in um, the interest in advanced manufacturing and um, what came new to us that sustainable aquaculture and water protection is important for both regions as uh, we have our, let's say, um, topics with, uh, with the Odra River. And also, um, there is there is a strong protection of water protection in in, in Tierra del Fuego. I need to continue this protection um, uh, in, aligned to to sustainable um, development. So, um, as we we see, we can see that uh, the impact for the stakeholders' uh, involvement. Uh, we established bilateral cooperation of coordinators from, coordinators from university on academic and training exchanges. We're still working on doing the same thing for uh, our innovation centers, but um, but we 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 go into the the, the, the areas that that we see that uh, that working well. So we uh, we are inspired by uh, the first uh, the, the the cooperation also have um, had inspired our. I'd say opposing uh, stakeholders uh, for policy instrument improvement within within other projects. Also, uh, the the pilots that we plan they are different than than that we would that we we would plan um, uh, without this cooperation. And also, um, this initiative of regional innovation hub for waters under the um, mission restored our ocean and waters. That we uh, we submitted um, to this mission, it's it wouldn't be submitted without this cooperation. So um, and it also it is supported strongly by the Technical University of Opola, and um, we hope that uh, that Argentina can uh, can also benefit from that. Uh, the Argentina, our our partners from Argentina, uh, Tierra del Fuego. And also that uh, National University of Tuel del, um, del Fuego can also join this initiative in some time. Um, yeah, we also were uh, looking for um, some some synergies uh, with uh, with other pair. Uh, we participated in um, in visit in, in Mag uh, of Magallanes in Ostrobothnia. We exchanged insights from bilateral cooperation. We are very, we were very strongly impressed by by um, Ostrobotnian uh, model of uh, of for for re regional hydrogen valley, um, but also uh, we saw that uh, FDIs they are also um, quite challenging to 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 our Latin American partners. Um, so um, I, the lessons learned about the, the lessons learned. Yes. I think uh, yeah. here I can pass voice to uh, to to. A floor to to Constanza. Yes, uh, about the international the, the impact on international level, I would like to add that the the initiatives, specifically maybe this uh, participation from in Magallanes visit in Ostrobotnia, it's important to say that these initiatives that can be adopted and applied globally, and I think that's the the strength or the opportunity. In that case, uh, Marcin, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, yes. Okay, uh, lessons learned from Tierra del Fuego. Uh, I think that uh, the experience and lessons learned from Tierra del Fuego highlight innovative approaches to incentivize SMEs, research and development cooperation. You know, the Findel, the Findel Mundo certificate uh, is an initiative that leverages the distinctive resources from Tierra del Fuego, uh, proving instrumental in identifying best practices and specifying interest for research cooperation. Uh, I think that the Tierra del Fuego case serves as a valuable example of tailoring incentives to the region in unique strengths and challenges. 
offering insights for other regions um, seeking to promote SMEs, uh, SMEs get engagement in research and development activities while addressing, I think this is very important, while addressing pressing environmental concerns. Um, as you can see in the in the in the print, um, the demand for innovation is very high in monitoring and elimination of water pollution, monitoring natural resources, counterfeiting wildfires, very important for us, and natural disasters. So uh, maybe that's the the lessons from Tierra del Fuego. Um, about that, okay. also we want to emphasize the importance of strengthening the role of universities within the regional innovation ecosystem. Uh, also, also, the Opoli and Tierra del Fuego experience uh, offer us uh, valuable uh, insights for regions seeking to enhance. Uh, SME's involvement in RD initiatives while uh, we are making a robust ties, ties sorry, between academic institutions and the broader entrepreneurial landscape. Yes, that's right. So uh, for the lessons learned for, um, for <clears throat> sorry, I skipped the, the slide, yes. The, the lessons learned for from uh, Opolski and Tierra del Fuego, um, was pretty slight, um, identify good practice for encouraging, fostering SMEs engagement in R&D cooperation. That we what we um, uh, wanted to to focus and and I think we we did identify good practice how we can engage our stakeholders, stakeholders and especially the SMEs in R&D cooperation. Uh, open and continuous EDP in Opolskie, bridging top-down and uh, bottom-up R&D cooperation. Um, I think it's um, it's it was important to uh, to share that and and to 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 share that in practice with uh, with all the stakeholders, strengthening the role in universities um, in the regional um, innovation uh, ecosystem. Um, this is. This was very important to understand our uh, own regions to uh, to 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 um, to let's say to understand how our regional ecosystems are working, um, and um, also that uh, the universities are the first one to 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 take um, the coordination, the take up uh, some some new to to. to to share the ownership of for, of the system with the universities, as we are um, um, peripheral, peripheral uh, um, let's say sometimes we call less developed uh, regions, but um, the the result for that is that uh, we have to take still be str be strong coordinators, but we would like to share this coordination with universities first. Um, as they are most uh, most active in our regions, so uh, we um, sort of we we think we we developed our own methodology for region to region cooperation uh, of less developed and and peripheral regions, um, especially between regions from from the EU and from Latin America, um, and also I I think we we learned that uh, that continuous strong coordination of the network is required. And um, we still, as regional governments, they we we have to um, be the one that facilitate this cooperation, and also that we coordinate some key projects that they are continuing. And that's why we have this um, this five parties um, five parties parties agreement uh, within the e MOU. Um, we call it an agreement or MOU, depending on the situation, but for to us, it's a kind of agreement, five parties agreement between two regions and uh, and uh, um, three universities. And we, um, during this this um, this cooperation, I think we we added very important one, uh, the the new SDGs that they're covering uh, some some new common activities. So the clean water and sanitation, and also the climate action. 
Um, and we, we, we are focusing now how we can um, exchange our staff, academic staff, um, practitioners uh, to do more, um, more uh, practical, practical results based on, on this, uh, on this MOU. Um, the recommendations, um, well, what we, we have seen um, in comparison to other region-to-region uh, -region cooperations, but also city-to-city -city cooperations, that we see that region-to-region -region cooperation, and we saw it from the beginning, requires more patience and additional resources for stakeholder involvement, uh, especially in international activities. Um, we have to be more Mm, it's proactive and we have to engage them uh, and have some resources for for engagement of stakeholders the proof of excellence um, of excellence for achievement of milestones of region to region co uh, collaboration would have been a good basis for applications um, for additional funds elsewhere and it's this goes uh, to national european and or any other level like from private uh, private public uh, sources uh, from some foundations um especially um for the of course for the for um the, this goes for the resources for the stakeholder involvement not for our involvement and also continuing um the, the support for region to region cooperation would have been um um, very nice to see that uh, that IRC or any other institutions could could uh, support us um, as uh, the less developed and peripheral regions they also would like to continue this uh, this cooperation so um, this is it I think uh, would you like something to add uh, Constanza no Martin it's, it's fine for me you are perfect. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Then, um, are there any questions to to us? Okay, thank you very much. Then, so Constanza thank Martin, much. thank you very much for your for your presentation. Uh, I think that uh, the three presentations have been uh, a fantastic uh, cooperation experiences with with many impactful and relevant actions. Uh, I can see that uh, we have here uh, uh, a question from uh, Pablo Yañez from uh, Puerto Montt in, in Chile, in Los Lagos region. Uh, and I'm going to uh, ask uh, all of you, the three programs, uh, and uh, Taking account the, the the question of of Pablo too, um, in the three experiences we must uh, highlight the importance of uh, involving the the private sector, the academia, the 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 type of society in the in the pro in the process, and uh, Pablo uh, uh, has a question that I think that. Uh, it's very interesting. Um, he is asking uh, about uh, how did you engage with the civil society groups and the stakeholders with uh, while you developed this this these collaborations? What was the 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 way that you you engaged with with uh, those stakeholders those uh, 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 civil society groups and and so on. So, um, for example, in, in the collaboration experience of uh, Ostrobotnia and, and Magallanes, I don't know, uh, Jerker, uh, Anna Karin or, or Claudia, uh, one of you, if you could, uh, you could uh, answer to the question of Pablo. Well, uh, we, we, we didn't really so much involves so much civil society groups but i think it can be done but it has to be a, a, in a mission based setting that 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 you you have to you see that 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 you you have a challenge uh, of of for instance of multinationals meeting meeting with 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 um, uh, the civil society and what kind of challenge does this this mean and then you can engage people but this 
and then I think the, the, the stakeholder analysis look for that who has an urgency, who has, has, a, has a power and legitimacy, especially when you when you look on the civil society, look you look to those who has an urgency with these challenges that we are seeing. So I think it starts to be challenge or mission oriented to engage with. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jerker. I'm from uh, Paraná, Silesia, Isulet, Philip or, uh, or Barbara. If I may start maybe uh, because uh, in our agreement, so we also put uh, uh, the issues like culture and uh, traditions and uh, this uh, kind of, uh, of stuff. And uh, so maybe that's the, 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 the first step to, 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 you know, attract the civil society as well to, to, to become a partner in these relations. Uh, what is also maybe important is the case of, of uh, Curitiba, that the, the largest, after Chicago, that's the second largest um, Polish um, community there. So I, I think that also may um, play a role uh, to, because we saw very, um, during our uh, visit when the agreement uh, was signed, so uh, there's also some of um, very important and uh, known um, uh, dance and 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 uh, song group uh, came to to Curitiba, and we saw how the 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 people who came uh, to see the spectacle, this uh, this uh, performance, uh, were interested in uh, in fact the. Um, what we are doing, why they came, uh, what's that, that the, the you know, that uh, uh, there is some cooperation and, and so on. So maybe that's some some of starting points of uh, to to how to attract the, the civil society. This is my opinion. I don't know, maybe Isule or Felipe will add something. Yeah, I, I give my opinion. Uh, as uh, Marcin and Constanza uh, Talk about the the SDGs of the the 2030 agenda. We all know that is not a government an agenda just for government. To the name is transforming our world, the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. So we need involve the whole society. We are here with Zule. We try Zule is an example. He is from private sector, as I said in my, in my presentation. Uh, with him, we try to, to work in quadruple helix. Always, when it's possible, we try to invite uh, members from civil society because they are already organized, like Rotary, Lions Club, Masonry, Scouts, and a lot of associations. So um, always when you have this approach with quadruple helix, I think it's easier to, to move forward. Isule, please. More, more than this, uh, what I believe is the, uh, we have a challenge, a communication challenge, because we are dealing with different uh, cultures. We are dealing with different uh, languages behaviors, expectatives, and objectives. So the first thing, uh, most important thing was the job done uh, to establish the pairings. And uh, my word of advice, we were very fortunate to be granted with the partnership with the Silesia region. Uh, second, uh, it depends, it's not only about communication, but it's also about uh, awareness, uh, readiness and organization. So uh, as Felipe mentioned, we started to talk and to cooperate uh, inside Paraná. So uh, Felipe, government of Paraná, CESPRO, me and Felipe, we started to cooperate to draw some things that uh, we encountered 
the opportunity to bring this uh, together with the, the opportunity of uh, IURC. So we were aware, we were ready, and we have the objectives. And uh, this is the beautiful part of the IURC, because uh, this somehow this was identified, perceived, and uh, the, the uh, matching was perfect. So there, there is these three or four parts that, that I mentioned, uh, I feel important. I don't yeah, know how, how sorry. Is, so go ahead. No, I, I also maybe want to underline the role of our uh, Polish uh, consul to, to in Curitiba. Uh, also is very helpful. And I know that after our official visit, you also together with Isule, you went to, to talk, uh, to, to meet her and to talk about the, the how to involve more, uh, yeah, more, more, more groups, more people, more, more, more topics into, into our cooperation to have their support, which is also important, yes. Her. Uh, she was uh, very, very important, fundamental uh, key person, uh, key institution in the role of the cooperation. Uh, we were fortunate to have the Polish consulate here in Curitiba and the support of, uh, of the council uh, that was committed to uh, support and to foster this uh, and make it happen. Unfortunately, she was not able to join us, but we uh, try to keep her posted of everything that is going on. So this is also uh, an important thing that connects with the governance system that I've uh, commented before also. Yeah. I think uh, Johannes, uh, Involve private sector and civil society should be my my opinion. I think Zole and Barbara also uh, should be like a, a condition to participate. A condition. This networking, I think, should be a condition to participate. Things change when you have this. Thank you, Philip. And I'm going to the last question of of this morning or afternoon depending of where you are connecting from um, and i need you to answer in about 30 seconds and one minute for from from each pairing the the question is is uh, uh, this one and we are going to to start from from the pairing of tierra de fuego and, and opolsky uh, for example, Martino Constanza, you can answer. Based on your cooperation experience, what aspect of uh, the, the I, uh, uh, URC program will you highlight to regions that uh, could participate in the future in a program of these uh, characteristics? What will you highlight of the, of the program? Which is the main the main characteristic, the main element that you you like to to highlight. I don't know, Marcin or or Constanza. Okay. Um, to us, the most important was to um, to see to to, to understand um, another uh, another region's uh, regional innovation ecosystem, how it works. Um, what are the problems? What are the um, challenges of the system? Um, we were focusing on on the ecosystem as um, as something um, specific for for the region, and we really had we had a great moment that we we discovered that Tierra del Fuego is, is our uh, chosen region, our our match, because. Uh, this is very specific region. It's um, you cannot find such a region uh, anywhere in the world. Um, so to us, it was very nice to 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 have this this um, this pair in this region. But I think it also um, I think 
we discovered that every region is unique and we need to um we need to discover it together uh, we need to learn from each other and uh, and then we we will find uh, we will find good practices and uh, mm, because if you if you don't uh, spend this time uh, for learning a little bit more about uh, uh, you know um, economy uh, politics culture um, you know organization and uh, and uh, see a um, little bit learn a little bit also about history of the region and um, this is also this is very important to have this time for to meet each other also build some uh, sp some uh, some good relations some some build some bonds and uh, as you said uh, Saidisha and and uh, we also Sidesian region, but Opole Sidesia, uh, by the by the way, um, but also um, you know the the bonds between um, between um, Sidesia and uh, and uh, Latin America they were very strong because of of the immigration from from our regions uh, to Brazil, but also to Argentina. So um, to us is uh, is always uh, some kind of already some has cultural meaning to 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 Polish people. The same also, I think, for to Argentinians that uh, they they already know some uh, something about uh, about us. So um, this is this was the start for good cooperation. To uh, that we already had some good impressions, and uh, and also I think um, of any cooperation, region to region cooperation, we have to start with uh, with um, with finding our unique uh, unique um, you know assets. And um, as then we, when we discover it, then we will try. We'll that we will uh, really um, find a way how we can cooperate. Especially, you know, we, we were saying about quadruple helix. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it's connected to quadruple helix because if you don't make this this uh, this door of research on the region that you work with, you cannot really um, go on. And um, you know, we are over already we are at the beginning of the new phase of cooperation as as uh, as was said in, in in brussels so uh i really believe that i really thank believe you, that thank you martin from uh, from uh, I can... we, we are I... we are uh, the time ah uh, okay thank you sorry but uh, I, I want uh, uh, all of parents, you have 20 seconds, but you have to promise in another 20 seconds. Impossible. <laughs> we like to speak a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sure. Uh, um, yo solamente, y disculpen, voy a hablar en español, seguramente va a haber una traducción, pero creo que amerita esta parte eh, poder hacerlo en, en, en mi lengua. Quiero destacar del programa de URC el, el, la metodología, el proceso del partnership. Eh, yo, como bien decía Marcin, creo que lo más interesante fue eh, el proceso de conocerse entre dos regiones tan distantes, no solamente en cuestiones de distancia geográfica, sino también cultural, idiosincrática, y cuando hablamos de idiosincrasia esto se traslada a los esquemas y a las dinámicas de la academia, del sector privado, de la sociedad civil, eh, y creo que la co-construcción de conocimientos y un proceso que fue sumamente acompañado y, y con un tiempo certero para que pudiera, digamos, madurar el proceso, eh, es lo que hay que destacar de IURC. Eh, digo, aprovecho esta instancia para, para, para decir esto, el acompañamiento que se tuvo, pero también la iniciativa por, por parte de cada uno de los socios. El, el caso nuestro con Opole, lo cierto es que tuvimos eh, una excelente dinámica de trabajo con excelentes compañeros desde otro lugar, así que consideramos que ha sido, digamos, eh, la cuestión de, de, de varios factores que hicieron que funcionara y que nosotros hoy pudiéramos proyectar esta cooperación internacional en un mediano y un largo plazo, donde se incluyen a otros actores del territorio, a otros stakeholders, eh, que lo que van a hacer es sostenerlo más allá de una gestión política, ¿sí? eh, sino que van a ser los mismos eh, actores que sostienen y que trascienden las políticas 
eh, de gobierno y la hacen una política de Estado, así lo, 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 lo diferenciamos en el caso de la Argentina. Así que en realidad creo que lo que más destacaría, y si tuviera que elegir una cosa respecto al programa de IURC, sería la metodología de acompañamiento que han tenido para la co-creación de conocimientos, en este caso entre Tierra del Fuego y Ocones. Muchas gracias, eh, Constanza, por, por las palabras. Eh, bueno, y, y por no cambiar de idioma, me voy al, al, al pairing de, de Ostrobotnia y Magallanes en Chile. No sé, eh, Claudia, si estás bueno, por ahí y, y nos puedes comentar un poco qué destacarías de la experiencia del programa brevemente. No sé, Claudia, si estás por ahí. I think that Claudia is not there, so maybe maybe Jerker, are you there, Jerker? No, no. Yes, I'm 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 here. Uh, yes, I would just to to continue on the on the point that made by by Constanza, and you know, in a regional government, you work with very concrete things. You are a policy implementer, but in this cooperation, you you have to to look wider. You have to have a challenge, and you have to. You have to think wider, and this is a very good thing that that you you have to mobilize different sorts of capacities. And I think this is the point, you know, that 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 you really you have to use all what you have, all the capacities. Uh, people who speak Spanish comes in, in in very handy in our work, and 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 looking uh, thinking on big things, and that's also good for your motivation and the things. And then then also I think the the point made by Pablo of, of engaging the civil society stakeholders is very important because we should look that way because uh, together with the government, civil society usually has the urgency and the urgency is needed when you want to change something. That, that, that the government sometimes gets very comfortable. So you, you have to have a government, government, civil society, university cooperation and, and, and so on, ultimately benefiting the, the, the the, the, the uh, cooperation and then like Martin was also saying I mean also Slobotnia is, is an outward looking country we are a set of emigres we, we have you know gone to emigrate to the United States and all over the world because of previous times of poverty and that due to this we are interested also in, in, in looking outwards thank you thank you Jörger and then let's go to the pairing of Paraná and and Silesia, for example, Barbara, uh, what would you highlight of the, the cooperation? Openness, I mean, of people, uh, the interest, and uh, uh, as I said, you know, openness to discussion and to, to uh, also well known your own uh, ecosystem, then to, to, to be able to, to present to, to our partners uh, what would be uh, suitable for some uh, common uh, projects or initiatives. Yeah, 20 seconds. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Barbara. So I think uh, we are at the end of, the, of this uh, interesting uh, uh, webinar. Uh, thank you very much to all the, the panelists. Thank you from Ostrobonia and Magallanes to Claudia and Karina and Jerker. Thank you from Paraná and Silesia to Isulet, Philippe and Barbara. And thank you from uh, Tierra de Fuego and uh, from Opolsky to Constanza and Marcin. Uh, thank you too very much for all uh, the people that uh, has been connected to, the, to this uh, interesting webinar. So, uh, good afternoon to all, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. See you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Bye-bye.